Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice homemade radical problem. We have an infinite radical, the square root of 2 times the cube root of 4 times the 4th root of 8, so on and so forth, where we have the powers of 2 inside the radicals and the radicals get more and more radical. So the index is 2, which is the square root, and then we have the cube root, and then the 4th root, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve these kinds of problems. I've done a similar problem before. You can go ahead and check that out. Great, so let's go ahead and see how we can simplify this expression. First of all, one of the things that we need to worry about with these kinds of things is if this is going to converge. Because if you don't get a finite product from here, there is no point in evaluating it, right? So. But it, this does converge, let me tell you, and when, when I kind of expand it and turn it into something else, you're going to realize this actually expands for a reason, okay? Or I should say converges for a reason. Here we go. So let's start by separating the radicals. For example, this 2 is inside one radical, so it's going to be the square root of 2. And then the 4 is under the radical, under the square root, and the cube root. So that kind of gives it the 6th root of 4, and then 8 is going to be under 2, 3, 4, which is going to give us 24, and that's 8, so on and so forth. Now, I, one thing I want you to realize is that when you look at these radicals, this is 2, we usually don't write it, but numbers go 2, 6, 24, this is actually 2 factorial, this is 3 factorial because it's 2 times 3, and this is 2 times 3 times 4, therefore, it is 4 factorial. So there's indeed a pattern here, a very nice one. But let's go ahead and write this a little differently. So in this case, since this is 2 to the first power, this is 4 to the first, but we can write it as 2 squared, and 8 can be written as 2 to the third power. So we can write these as follows. First of all, start with this. 2 to the power, 1 over 2 factorial, multiply by 4 to the power, 1 over 3 factorial, multiply by 8 to the power, 1 over 4 factorial. You get the pattern? Now notice that the bases are powers of 2 and the exponents are reciprocals of factorials where the number goes up by 1. So they're consecutive factorials but we take their reciprocals and make them exponents. Make sense? Okay, let's put it together but simplify this a little bit more. Uh, since we have different bases but they're all e powers of 2 we can go ahead and write each one. For example, 4 can be written as 2 squared, 8 can be written as 2 to the third, and so on and so forth. The next one is going to be 2 to the fourth, 16, right? So we can turn this into the following, 2 to the power 1 over 2 factorial, and then 2 to the power 2 over 3 factorial, because this 2 will be multiplied by 1 over 3 factorial, and then the next term is going to be 2 to the power 3 over 4 factorial, you get the pattern, and then dot, dot, dot. You only need to look at a couple different uh, values to get the pattern. Once you get the pattern, you don't need to beat around the bush or beat a dead horse. Okay, great. So now we can basically add all the exponents because we have the same base. This gives us 2 to the power 1 over 2 factorial plus 2 over 3 factorial plus 3 over 4 factorial, so on and so forth. And this is the million dollar question. What's the million dollar question? The million dollar question is the exponent. 1 over 2 factorial plus 2 over 3 factorial plus 3 over 4 factorial and so on and so forth. How do we evaluate the sum? And there's a really nice way to do it. Let me go ahead and show you. Actually, there's kind of two ways to look at it. But first, I want to write this expression using sigma. How do I write it using sigma? It's an important skill. Sometimes you'll be given series, sometimes infinite series like this, infinite sums like this, and you should be able to turn it into sigma notation because sigma has a lot of nice properties, uh, has a lot of good shortcuts, and we can simplify things, we can separate things, we can combine things, we can do so many things, it's just amazing. Anyways, to keep a long story short, I'm going to go ahead and write this as follows. n equals 1 to infinity, notice that my numerator is n, and my denominator is 1 more than n, with a factorial sign. So my general term, the nth term, is going to be n over n plus 1 factorial. And this is just awesome. Do you know why? Because this can be 
turned into something beautiful. And I'll tell you what it is in a little bit, but just hang in there. Now, we're going to use a very common trick. A lot of times when I do these things, people are like, how on earth you came up with some? I mean, I didn't come up with these things all the time. You know, these practices have been used over and over many times. It's a common trick, as far as I know, is to kind of split, split the numerator. I obviously want to use something that kind of looks like partial fractions, maybe. So I want to write the n as n plus 1 minus 1. Adding 1 and subtracting 1 will be helpful. Because when you do that, let me put the sigma real quick. Don't worry about the limits. They're all the same. But now, here's uh, one thing we can do. We can basically write this as n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. And then minus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. And this is just awesome. You know why? Because now, this turns into a telescopic sum. How? Well, n plus 1 factorial can be written as n plus 1 times n factorial. n plus 1 cancels out. And here we end up with 1 over n factorial. And then to, from that, you can subtract n plus 1 factorial. To get a better idea how this is going to telescope, we can go ahead and separate the sigmas. And now I can go ahead and write my limits. And then this is going to become just awesome. Take a look. Now I'm going to go ahead and expand. And separating them is actually a really good idea because you're going to see how terms cancel out. If n is equal to 1, we're going to get 1, 1 over 2 factorial, 1 over 3 factorial, so on and so forth. And then from that, I need to subtract a gigantic sum. It starts with n equals 1, but the first term is 1 over 2 factorial, and then 1 over 3 factorial, and then so on and so forth, right? Now notice that all these terms cancel out, leaving us with 1. But 1 is not the answer. Do you know why? Because we are supposed to find 2 to the power 1. So in this case, this whole thing converges to 1. And the reason it converges is because it's telescoping. And this becomes 2 to the 1. And the answer is 2. So that gigantic radical is equivalent to 2. And it's just finite, right? Is that possible at all? Yeah, we have a 2 here. All we need is another 2 that's going to come from here. And that's actually going to come from that. Anyways, this almost brings us to the end of this video. But I want to show you something real quick before we dismiss class. Class not dismissed yet, so wait. So here's the thing. When you write it like a difference of two things, this is actually something well known. Do you recognize it? You should know if you dealt with a little bit of trigonometry or maybe pre-calculus or calculus, but this is just E. And this is missing the first term, but it's kind of like E, which is E minus 1. So when you subtract E minus 1 from E, you do get 1 as the result, and then you have to do 2 to the power of that. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and... Bye-bye.